first question is, uh, when did you first start like doing any kind of painting or any kind of artwork or anything that would have led you to think that was something you liked to do? Just about for as long as I can, for as long as I can remember. I thought I wanted to be a cartoonist when I was younger, and then I changed to painting when I was about, you know, I don't know, 15 or so. So you like the black sheep of the family? Well, I was until I started doing well. How did you have the money that you had to live on? I used to look for money at the mud club on the floor. Really? With Hal Ludiger. <laughs> we used to find it too most times, yeah. And um. What's your vision of the world then? What was? Oh, well, I remember. Everybody's rich. That's what, that's what you think. You think everybody's rich, no matter who they are. You know, I mean, you know, you just sell oh, for three dollars. I could, you know, make myself a dinner. You know, you see people are spending twenty-five dollars. Like, everybody just seems rich, and you're really bitter, and you hate every, everybody. What, what? What were you painting then? I just sell postcards for a dollar. You had to paint on like found stuff, right? You couldn't afford to go out. Well, the first paintings I made were on windows and, and on doors like, that I found on the street. Mm -hmm. And then when I first made some money, I went and bought, bought some canvas. 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 Did you, did you know that you were uh, going to stop doing stuff on walls and start painting on canvas? Or was that? No, that, I was more interested in attacking the gallery circuit at that time. I didn't think about doing paintings. I just thought about making fun of the ones that were in there. So did you have any idols or any uh, heroes, either in the art world or outside of the art world? Let's go. Well, mostly Rauschenberg and, and Warhol. So what about this show that you have with Andy Warhol? You'll work for a year and about a million paintings. And How did you uh, do the collaboration? He started. He, he would start most of the paintings. He would put like a product logo and then I would sort of deface it and then and then I would try to get him to work some more on it. You know, and then I would work more on it. I used to paint all the stuff all the time. Yeah. I would try to get him to do at least two things, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, he, he likes to do just one hit, one hit you know, and then, <laughs> and, and then have me do all the work on, after that. Well, that's it. That's it. Well, let's have some more questions. <laughs> How does an artist go from living on the street to selling a painting for $25,000 at 20 years old, calling Madonna his girlfriend, teaming up with the legendary Andy Warhol, tragically dying at only 27 in 1988, and yet sold a painting in 2017 at a price so high it set a new record at auction for an American artist. Only one person I know, and that would be the legendary Jean-Michel Basquiat. Am I on? Oh, wait a minute. I wasn't ready. Can we do that again? Jean-Michel Basquiat was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1960. As you might have imagined by his unique name, Basquiat was the definition of multicultural. His father was from Haiti and mother of Puerto Rican descent which meant by age 11, Basquiat was fluent in French, Spanish, and English. Basquiat seemed to be a quick learner, and by age four, he was able to read and write. He often created cartoon-inspired drawings with the encouragement of his mom, who had an interest in art. At age seven, in 1968, he was hit by a car while playing in the street. Yeah, Not exactly yeah, the best hurt. place to play. Ooh, this cool. left Basquiat spending right, well, a lot of time okay, at so. home recuperating well, in bed. Better, his mom okay. bought him Gray's Anatomy drawing well, book Anatomy. to work from, which definitely show. influenced his future work. That same year, his parents separated, which meant his dad raised he and his sisters, which included a move to Puerto Rico for two years in 1974. After moving back to New York when Basquiat was 15, the pressure and stress of moving again, mixed with his mom, who is now in a mental institution, finally got to him, and he ran away from home. Yourself, he spent a week sleeping yeah. on benches in Tompkins Square Park, and after being arrested, oh, was returned to his dad. Red, red, Not yeah, long after, at age 17, he dropped out of high school, and his dad kicked him out of the house. He moved to an alternative high school and supported himself by selling t-shirts and homemade postcards. By 1976, Basquiat and his friend Al Diaz began spray painting graffiti on buildings in Lower Manhattan, working under the name Samo. Samo, simply shortened for same old, was a creative way of calling out the predominantly white corporate and art world that Basquiat wanted to break into. Basquiat had found a job at the unique clothing warehouse and the art department during the day, and at night continued to paint original graffiti. In 1980, he met Andy Warhol and presented samples of his work. Warhol was amazed by his, quote, mystique and allure, 
they end up collaborating on a film called Downtown 81, which included music from Basquet, who also happened to be a musician. Basquiat's breakthrough happened this same year in June, where he participated in the Times Square Show, a multi-artist exhibition where he was noticed by various critics and curators. One was Emilio Mazzoli, an Italian gallery owner who liked Basquiat so much, he invited him to have his first solo show in Modena, Italy, which included many painted pieces on found objects like doors. By 1983, he was now painting in a studio in Venice, California, having gallery events in West Hollywood and showing up to those events with his girlfriend, who you might have heard of, Madonna. A friend of Basquiat said he would introduce her by saying, this is my girlfriend. Her name is Madonna. She is going to be huge. Yeah, that was a pretty accurate statement. At this time, heads and skulls appeared in a lot of his works. Burred by the neo-expressionist art boom, Basquiat's work was in great demand. Neo-expressionism referred to a new, rough style of creating and expressing yourself. It gave a nod to artists like Jackson Pollock, but Basquiat's work included recognizable subjects mixed with abstract ideas. By February 10th, 1985, Basquiat appeared on the cover of the New York Times Magazine. This was unprecedented for any young African-American artist and definitely put Basquiat and his work in the spotlight. Despite the success he had so quickly, his emotional instability continued to be a problem. With great fame comes great pressure. In his short career, Basquiat created around 1,500 drawings and 600 paintings and many sculpture and mixed media pieces too. Sotheby's in 2017 sold this Basquiat 1982 masterpiece for $110 million, smashing a new auction record for a U.S. artist, all to cheers and applause in the room. Yeah, that's a crazy amount of money. For most artists, it takes almost the length of two lifetimes before seeing success. But for Basquiat, it came within 10 years, which is crazy. I love what Keith Haring said at Basquiat's memorial. He truly created a lifetime of works in 10 years. Greedily, we wonder what else he might have created, what masterpieces we have been cheated out of by his death. But the fact is that he created enough work to intrigue generations to come. Only now will people begin to understand the magnitude of his contribution. And I couldn't agree more. Basquiat was definitely one of a kind. These strokes of genius belong to 21-year-old black Brooklynite Jean-Michel Basquiat, one of America's most charismatic painters and currently its highest sold. Born in 1960 to a Haitian father and a Puerto Rican mother, Basquiat spent his childhood making art and mischief in Borum Hill. While he never attended art school, he learned by wandering through New York galleries and listening to the music his father played at home. He drew inspiration from unexpected places, scribbling his own versions of cartoons, comic books, and biblical scenes on scrap paper from his father's office. But it was a medical encyclopedia that arguably exerted the most powerful influence on Basquiat. When young Jean-Michel was hit by a car, his mother brought a copy of Grey's Anatomy to his hospital bed. It ignited a lifelong fascination with anatomy that manifested in the skulls, sinew, and guts of his later work which frequently explores both the power and vulnerability of marginalized bodies. By 17, he launched his first foray into the art world with his friend, Al Diaz. They spray-painted cryptic statements and symbols all over Lower Manhattan, signed with the mysterious moniker, Samo. These humorous, profound, and rebellious declarations were strategically scattered throughout Soho's art scene. And after revealing himself as the artist, Basquiat leveraged Samo's success to enter the scene himself, selling postcards, playing clubs with his avant-garde band, and boldly seeking out his heroes. By 21, he turned to painting full-time. His process was a sort of calculated improvisation. Like beat writers who composed their work by shredding and reassembling scraps of writing, Basquiat used similar cut-up techniques to remix his materials. When he couldn't afford canvases, he fashioned them out of discarded wood he found on the street. He used oil stick, crayons, spray paint, and pencil 
and pulled quotes from the menus, comic books, and textbooks he kept open on the studio floor. He kept these sources open on his studio floor, often working on multiple projects at once, pulling in splintered anatomy, reimagined historical scenes, and skulls transplanted from classical still lives, Basquiat repurposed both present-day experiences and art history into an inventive visual language. Basquiat made thousands of paintings and drawings, along with sculpture, fragments of poetry, and music. His output accelerated alongside his meteoric rise to fame, but his life and work were cut tragically short when he died from a drug overdose at the age of 27. After his death, Basquiat's work only increased in value, but the energy and flair of his pieces have impacted much more than their financial worth. Today, his influence swirls around us in music, poetry, fashion, and film, and his art retains the power to shock, inspire, and get under our skin. All right, guys, so now we're going to be creating a background. We're going to do that by choosing three colors and painting shapes and trying to cover the whole paper. While that is drying, we're going to learn how to draw a Basquiat dinosaur. Hey, the dinosaur looks like me. Look, a crown with the dinosaur hat. Now we're going to draw our own version. We're going to start with the crown, the major symbol that makes it a Basquiat type creature or character. We'll start with the slope that goes down to his tail and we'll make a little knobby thing for the mouth. You'll see it looks more like a mouth in a minute. There's two little arms and two little legs coming down, down to a tail. It does not have to be exact, just do your best. We're just making a little T-Rex with some funny looking character. Basquiat didn't try to make it look like a realistic uh, T-Rex, you don't have to either. Don't forget the spikes. You can also make a little glowing mark around it. Uh, Basquiat did that. He put white around it, so that's what I'm drawing here. Hey guys, did you see my tail? <laughs> there, now we're going to color in that dinosaur with pastels or crayons. I'm using crayons here, so I'm coloring in the eyes. And then I'm going to do the uh, circle on his tummy, which was red as well. And then the spikes. So I'll do that again so you can see. All right, there's some spikes. Then I'm going to color it in. So you can see I'm using the black there. I left the white space for his teeth. Color it in, put a little red spot, color in the spikes. All right, now we're going to use some drawing and symbols to decorate our background. It's already dried. Here's some symbol ideas of what you could put. And now I'm going to draw it on top of the painted background. You can see the different drawings. I'm trying to create a story with the pictures, okay? You can also add words to create meaning. Now we're gonna go back to our dinosaur, we're gonna cut it out, and we're gonna put it somewhere on our background, okay? Now we have a finished piece of artwork. Make sure your name is on the front, and it looks amazing. All right, guys, have fun, make some incredible art. Good job.